Here's one of the ways to create a significant gravitational wave. It's a binary star system with two masses revolving in a circular orbit around a common center of gravity. The star's acceleration creates gravitational waves that travel out from the system in all directions, just like the light waves they are generating. The gravitational wave solutions show that the frequency of the created gravitational wave is twice the rotation rate of the binary system. To understand the factors involved in the generation of the two polarizations and their amplitudes, we have constructed a coordinate system with its center at the center of the orbital motion in the orbital plane. The amplitude of the gravitational wave depends on the masses of the two objects and the distance between them. In addition, we need to consider the angular rotation and the viewing angle to determine the strength of each polarity at any point in time. There is one more key factor to consider when it comes to binary systems, namely that the gravitational waves carry energy and momentum away from the system. We call this gravitational luminosity. Newton and Kepler provided the mechanics for understanding what happens to the orbit when gravitational energy is lost. Because binding energy is negative, a loss of energy will make it a larger negative. This has the effect of reducing the distance between the two objects. This in turn increases their velocity. A shorter circumference and faster velocity reduces the time it takes for a full orbit and therefore increases the frequency of rotation and therefore the frequency of the gravitational wave. And the wave equations show that the amplitude of the gravitational wave will increase with the frequency. The rate that the frequency is changing is called the chirp. It gives us the ability to express the amplitude of the gravitational wave in terms of the frequency and the rate the frequency is changing, instead of the masses and the distance between the masses. This is crucial because for most cases we will have no way of knowing directly what the masses are or how far apart they are. But measuring the frequencies might be possible. If we can also measure the amplitude, we can even calculate the distance to the binary system. Because this distance is based on gravitational wave luminosity, it is called the luminosity distance. For most all gravitational wave sources, this will be the only way to figure out how far away they are. With a decaying orbit, the objects will eventually collide and coalesce. We can even calculate how long that would take the resulting waveform, called a coalescing waveform, serves as a signature for this kind of gravitational wave source. It has three phases. The in-spiral, the merger, and the ring down to an object that is no longer asymmetric and therefore no longer radiating gravitational waves. To get an idea on the expected amplitudes and frequencies for gravitational waves created by a system like this one, let's put in some numbers. Suppose this system is 100 light years away and each star is the mass and size of our Sun. And the distance between them is 50 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. That's 50 astronomical units. From the masses and the distance between them, we can calculate the star's orbital period. And with that, we can calculate the orbital frequency, which gives us the frequency and wavelength of the resulting gravitational wave. And with the masses and frequency, we can calculate the amplitude of the resulting gravitational wave. Here we have a very small number. It would add around a hundredth of the diameter of an electron to a meter stick. What's more, it would take over 62 years to reach this minuscule stretched length. Not only that, 
It will take trillions of years to merger. Should this system ever reach the point where it is close to merging, we'd get the maximum gravitational wave amplitude. We find that the distance between their centers of mass is still way too large to produce a significant amplitude. This one is approximately the ratio of the width of a human hair to the distance to Alpha Centauri, four light years away. Here is where this data point fits on a graph with wavelength decreasing along the x-axis and amplitude increasing along the y-axis. Binary systems like this one are plentiful and all around us. There are literally billions of them sending gravitational waves our way from every direction. But the gravitational waves they create are weak and totally indistinguishable from one another. They just wind up contributing to a background noise level. In our sensitivity graph, we see that, in order to detect a gravitational wave, a binary system will have to create waves with greater amplitudes and higher frequencies to generate smaller wavelengths than the noise level marked in green. To stand out, a binary system is needed that can achieve much higher velocities. And as we have seen from our example, the large diameters of stars prevents them from ever getting close enough to reach the needed velocities. But rotating neutron stars might be small enough to achieve the needed speed.